Welcome to Camden Harbor, a quaint little bay with some of the giants of history residing in its waters. I'm talking about the Windjammer cruise ships. These aren't just any cruise ships though, they are some of the oldest sailing ships still in operation. In fact, I get to go on the oldest sailing ship still operating in the USA. I mean, look at it. Isn't it gorgeous? Today we'll be leaving around 10 a.m. to set sail from Camden all the way up the coast of Maine. If you haven't seen my last videos on wind jamming and what it is, why it's better than traditional cruises and more sustainable, and several others, be sure to check them out on my channel and those videos after watching this one. All aboard! Okay, let's get going. Can't wait for this unique adventure in one of the most underrated states in the USA. Hi, my name is Janiel. Welcome to Culture Trekking, where I try to collect unique stories from around the globe that focus on sustainable adventure and cultural connections. I call Utah home, but today I am taking you to Camden, Maine to go sailing. Now this isn't just a regular sailing cruise. We were going for the MWA Fleet Windjammer Festival. It's where all of the schooners within the MWA Fleet get together and have a massive party. Woohoo! Traditionally, the Windjammer Festival, they connect all of the schooners together. They, you're able to go and meet all the passengers on all of the other ships. But this year, because of COVID, it's a little special. We were going on a scavenger hunt with extra points for dressing up. Before I get ahead of myself though, let's go check out the cabins. Few tips, pack only a duffel bag because there isn't much space within the cabins themselves. They do have warm bedding for you and earplugs as noise carries in the ship. After that, head up to the galley where there's an endless supply of warm beverages for you to drink and stay warm. They also have a library where you can read all about how the Louis R. French became a national historic landmark and its history. Pretty cool. After taking the sails down, I decided it was time for a polar plunge. Oh my god! Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Do 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 it. Yes! She's a pro. <laughs> okay, that's my guy, no cold. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh they do have RV like showers that are heated by the wood burning stove. And this is our chef, Nails. I would just like to appreciate how good his food was, but also how well he can juggle when the ship is moving side to side. Time for the scavenger hunt. Just a few tips. We decided on a really good chant shark bait. Ooh ha ha. Shark bait. Ooh ha ha. It really, it, it helps, but it didn't make us win. But this scavenger hunt really was so much fun, and I got to see some of my other friends on the fellow boats. The end of the festival is celebrated in style with Little Boomer. It was a well-earned, relaxing evening. Now, you can actually lay up on deck, bring your sleeping bag, and sleep under the stars, or just have a very romantic evening. The relaxing evening turned into a very relaxing, moody, foggy morning. I loved every minute of it. This is a whole nother definition of snail mail. Now that we're all awake, <laughs> we headed out into the fog to find somewhere else to explore. 
When fog rolls in though, there isn't much wind, so we had to kind of motor our way along. North Haven is a very remote place to live. In fact, there's only about 355 people living on the island and they have to ship everything in. But I found a sense of peace walking around, looking at flowers, the abandoned buildings, and the cute homes. What a vacation spot to just get away from the hustle and bustle of the cities. The skies opened about 40 minutes after we started exploring the city, so it was back to the boat for some of Nail's great chili to warm up and to go into a food coma. Main weather is a very fickle thing. So when I woke up from my food coma, we had been circling around the lighthouse called Spark Plug, because it looks like one. And around and around and around we went because there was no wind. Hazards of being on a sailboat. However, our Captain Garth was really great at keeping us all entertained, including a few stops to go hiking. It was nice to get off the boat for a few minutes and stretch my legs. And getting back on was also nice because it was dinner time. As I was reading up on some of the other schooners in the fleet, suddenly there was a man overboard. Well, not really, it was a drill. But it was pretty exciting seeing the first mate and Nails, our cook, jump in the motorboat to go and retrieve all of the life jackets we threw after the fake person in the water. <laughs> I think the best part about going on a sailing trip like this is meeting the people around you and forcing yourself to relax. Take it all in. Maybe learn a new skill like knot tying that Phoebe taught me. It's a great picture right there. Ask the captain if you can steer the ship for a while. It's pretty fun. And now for the crowning glory of this sailing cruise, the lobster bake. Nothing better. One of the most popular things to do on this cruise is actually the live lobster bake. We are here on Warren Island where there is a lot of hiking. You'll hear the faint sound of the bell in the background, the gorgeous views, and you watch sunset over the ocean and these forested islands. You can't get much better than this. Right, so got my first piece, a little bit of butter. Okay, that's worth ripping them apart like a heathen. Seafood animal, so hard for me to eat. Oh, I just lost you. Apparently, according to Phoebe, these are the best parts. Would you like some? <laughs> Trying to get it out in one piece. Well, there's some. 
All right. How was your first time eating lobster? But not yet. I did not all right. Yet. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> I haven't had my turn. I would say I took to it quite well. <laughs> lobster and s'mores can't get much better than this. As the lobster bake wound down, we all kind of got a little sad because we realized this was the last stop and it also was our last day. So we took advantage of the sunset, played some music, shared stories and contact information, and just took all of it in. Such great memories with a great group of people and company. The next morning, I feel like all of us were quite reluctant to leave, but that just means we get to come back again for more memories and a whole new group of new people. Thank you for joining me on this cruise uh, with the Lewis R. French and the MWA fleet. I appreciate them so much for sponsoring me to come out on this trip. If you would like to book your trip on the Schooner French, please click the link in the description box down below. And if you have any questions, put those down there too. We'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share it with a friend because why? More the merrier. See you in the next one, y'all. Bye.